Do you want to become a cloud DevOps engineer where you make six figures while working from home? It is very important for you to understand what a data center is and what the structure is made of. I am Junior Kuma, CEO of Zashi. I'll take this time to explain to you what a data center actually is. So many years ago, when companies started hosting applications, they had to do this by buying hardware servers. A hardware server is nothing but a physical device that has memory as well as CPU. So that definitely means if you have a lot of applications that you have to host, you need to buy a lot of hardware servers. Believe me, servers are so damn expensive and you will not have the amount of money to get such servers. What companies used to do was they were going to build large infrastructures and these infrastructures were actually known as data centers. So think about a data center, a building that you are actually going to host a cluster of your hardware servers inside of the building. In a data center, you're going to find a cluster of hardware, but this cluster of hardware is actually going to be within a network. So the first thing you're going to find in the data center is actually a network. When we talk about the network, we're talking about physical components of the network, like nodes, routers, switches, and all of that. Upon this network, you are then going to have the hardware server. And this hardware server is the device that you're going to use to host your application data inside. The hardware server is actually made up of computes as well as memory. Compute is going to be denoted as CPU. Memory is going to be denoted as RAM. One other thing that the hardware server is going to have is storage, but I'm going to have this outside of the box. Upon this hardware server, what companies actually do is they are going to install hypervisor softwares inside of it. So they're going to actually install hypervisor softwares inside of it. When we talk about a hypervisor software, it's nothing but a software that gives you the ability to host virtual machines or virtual computers on the same underlying host. Examples of hypervisors actually include the Hyper-V for Windows as well as the VMware for Linux. Now, when you actually install a hypervisor software inside of your hardware server, you are giving it the ability to carry out virtualization. When we talk about virtualization, we are simply talking about the process of being able to create virtual computers on the same on the line host server, which is the hardware server. Now, that definitely means that you could have virtual machines on this hardware server. And the number of virtual machines you could actually have on the hardware server is actually dependent on the size of that hardware server. This virtual machines that you actually have is going to have its own operating system. So it could have its own operating system, which could be Linux, or Windows, or Mac OS. So the virtual machines are going to have their operating system. This is actually known as the guest operating system. So this is a VM, this is a VM, and this is a VM. Just so you know, these VMs are isolated from each other. Upon this VM, you are going to have your application runtime installed. When we talk about the application runtime, we are simply talking about dependencies that are needed for the application to be hosted on that virtual machine. The dependency could be Python, it could be Java, it could be Tomcat. It all depends on which kind of application you're trying to host on your virtual machine. On the VM, you are going to have your application and then you are going to have your application data. So that's simply what happens inside of 
the virtual machine. So this virtual machine gives you the ability to be able to host your application inside of it. You might be asking yourself, how do you allocate memory? How do you allocate CPU? How do you allocate storage to these virtual machines? So what actually happens is, your hypervisor is going to give you the ability to share the CPU and the memory from your underlying hardware server. So you're going to get some of the CPU from your hardware server as well as some of the memory from your hardware server. You're going to allocate that to each and every VM hosted on that hardware server. This CPU is going to actually be called vCPU and the memory is actually going to be called VRAM. When we talk about vCPU and VRAM, we just simply mean it is virtual CPU as well as virtual RAM because you are locating that to a virtual machine and the virtual machine is nothing but a virtual computer that you access over the internet and it has it cannot be um, accessed physically. That's pretty much what is happening. This is very, very important. The reason why I had the storage outside of the box is pretty much because majority of the time, you are not going to virtualize the storage. So what actually happens is that you are actually going to get some of the storage and you are going to allocate it to your VM. And this is going to be done over the, the network. That is simply what a data center is actually made up of and these are the core components of your data center. It is very important that you understand what each and every one of these components do. Thank you very much.